we have to decarbonize and low carbon hydrogen has to be part of those solutions. But we need to move faster. For carbon intensive industries, green hydrogen is going to become the most economic choice and in some cases the only sustainable choice. We're working with so many companies and so many different partners essentially to create the future. We're solving the issue of how storing energy into something that does not produce any byproduct that is harmful for the environment. You can take renewable power and you don't have to use it right away when it's created. You can store it and use it later. And the fact that we're doing that, I think, is the most advanced scientific and sustainable goal of this century. Producing low carbon hydrogen is a capital intensive process and it's new there needs to be significant infrastructure investment made. We're going to need more renewables, more grids. We're going to need reliable suppliers of equipment, and we're going to need new infrastructure for the actual molecule. Currently, there's an annual capacity of green hydrogen planned of about 38 metric tons. Only 4% of that already has the committed finance behind it. We have to be able to move faster than that. We do have to enable a trade structure, a certification scheme, and supply chain connections across borders to really support that movement. We actually have projects that are working and are operating, and we have long-term agreements with customers that are willing to bridge that gap. So in some applications, in some industries, we're there. When we looked at Puerto Llano, we looked at the customer needs, and we saw a customer that was willing to pay a premium for this commodity because they wanted to be first movers. Puerto Llano is part of the overall vision that we started 20 years ago with renewables. The current size of the market today is about 1.4 billion USD. What we see is that that could grow to about 12 billion USD by 2030. But if we look to the IEA's net zero pathways information, it could be over 100 billion USD. The growth potential is significant. If we take economies out, there's also a more valuable advantage, which is the environmental one. All the synthesis and the use of hydrogen imply zero carbon emissions. That's very good for the communities. How do we ensure that the development of the low carbon hydrogen economy and all of the infrastructure investment that goes into that is ensuring that it's delivering both responsible results for the environment and responsible environments for people as well? We're trying to find the exact project for the exact application in the exact sector that is going to work today. In order to really scale low cost to green hydrogen, we have to really understand what good investments look like. WBCSD has put together a whole guide on what strong investment criteria should be used for decision making for low carbon energy solutions. For a complete acceleration on the adoption of the new technology and the new commodity, what we need to do is working on two fronts simultaneously. There's demand and supply, but there's also incentives and mandates. We're going to need faster permitting periods and faster interconnection periods. When we can get those things aligned, we're going to really start to unlock the finance and move at the speed that we need. Now is the time when we've got to dig into these tougher solutions, the more expensive solutions, to be able to allow companies across all sectors to decarbonize. We can create collective action that moves at a greater pace than any company or any market can actually do on their own. The most exciting thing for me is the fact that you can solve one of the most important things in the energy industry, which is taking renewable energy and not having to expend it at that particular time. The need is so urgent. We have to go fast. We have to go fast together. And this is creating solutions in ways that we've not historically done. I find that incredibly motivating. I'm very optimistic. Hydrogen has had a lot of waves coming and going. This one is the most powerful wave, and I think we cannot miss it.